Hi, I'm Lisa Sanderson with UFI Physics Extension in Sumter County for Let's Talk Gardening. I'm doing an invasive plant series. So let's get started. All right, so if you look at this, you can see there's a few uh, flower buds which are uh, opening. They'll be opening later today. So usually this plant, which you can see, is completely covered with purple blooms. Uh, and so right now they just are just starting to open as the day is starting to warm up just a little bit. Uh, and so this is actually an invasive plant. It's called Ruellia simplex. It's a Mexican petunia. Many people have this. I've seen it all over the place. And so the problem with this plant uh, is that it is a, a plant that's native to Mexico. It's from the Antilles, Western Bolivia. Uh, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Northwest Argentina. So it is, it is um, something that is from other places and has been actually uh, kind of uh, planted all over and I think nurseries had sold it and they're still selling it. Uh, this particular plant, uh, which actually is a, a problem because it spreads by stolons, I mean uh, for uh, rhizomes, I'm sorry, underground stems. So there's a couple ways that this plant will spread. And so it is something that um, what I've noticed is that in this area you can't really see it in the grass, but you can see how large a plant this is up underneath this tree. Uh, and it will end up spreading out into areas uh, by those rhizomes, which are underground stems. Uh, and in natural areas also, the problem can come from the seed. And so uh, it flowers prolifically, seed is produced, and that seed is really viable. It doesn't require any treatment at all. It doesn't have to have any uh, stratification, which is a temperature. Sometimes things are slowed down a bit by those cool temperatures. Uh, but this one doesn't have that problem and it doesn't need to scarify, which means it doesn't have any kind of treatment uh, where the seed would need to be um, roughed up a little bit to germinate. So it germinates readily just based on what it produces. And so uh, this is one that is a perennial. Uh, it will uh, spread easily into natural areas, which can be a real problem. And it's suitable for so many different types of locations. So it can handle sun, uh, which it finds here, even underneath this tree. It, it finds sun, it sh uh, uh, survives well in shade, uh, moist conditions, drought conditions, which, which is what we have here because I have no irrigation. Uh, so this is one of those plants that you'll find all over the place. I've seen it in people's yards, like mine, for example, it's probably been here for a while. Uh, and it is a plant that will end up getting uh, removed. And so there's a couple ways uh, that you can remove this plant. So first of all, you can't just cut it back. It's a perennial. So even though you cut it back or if it were killed back by cold, for example, it would still uh, come back the next year from the crown, that, that part of the plant that produces new plants. And so it would do that. So that's what this plant will do. Uh, so you can't just cut it back. You could take the time to dig it out if it's something you have in your landscape, which is the invasive variety, uh, you want to make sure that it is removed. And the reason is, is because the seed is so prolific and easy to germinate. It can be easily blown to other places and then will start to grow there. So you wanna make sure that you remove yours. And I know people really love this plant. Um, so it is, uh, cause it's, it's beautiful pollinators just flock to it. So I end up having uh, bees and butterflies will flit all over this. And who wouldn't love to have something like that in your landscape to have those. In fact, they're, they're starting to show up already. Uh, so they will be um, prolific in terms of uh, seed production because you've got those pollinators showing up that are sharing the pollen between the flowers and lo and behold, it goes everywhere. So to manage this in your landscape, you're gonna need to do a couple things. You could dig it up. And that, and depending on the, how much you have, uh, it might be a lot, might be just a little bit. This one will take a little bit of work because I also have a tree there, um, but I, I will end up getting rid of this plant. Uh, there are some substitutions. And so after you've gone through, you can either um, dig it up, you can uh, spray it with glyphosate. And uh, this, to me, this would not be the best time of year to do that because things are a little bit cooler. Um, it may not be completely actively growing. So you really wanna use glyphosate um, and that, that's that active ingredient in Roundup that most people know about. Um, and you wanna make sure that whatever the product is, you're getting just the product with glyphosate in it. 
And so you can spray this with glyphosate when it's actively growing. Uh, sometimes people can cut it back and when it starts to actively grow you can spray that. And it may take a couple go arounds depending on the number of rhizomes you have. So that's something you can do. Um, and so dig it up or treat it with um, glyphosate. Uh, it is something that um, you may want to see if any of it comes back either after you dig it up or after you spray to make sure that you get it all. Uh, but there are some other options you have. So if you really like this plant, uh, you can actually get a few cultivars. So there are some sterile varieties and I think University of Florida actually produced those. And so um, one of them is called Mayan Purple. If people just love to have these purpley blue flowers, Mayan Purple or Purple Showers. So you're going to look for cultivar names in the places where you shop. If it does not have a label on it, identifying it as a cultivar, you're going to want to make sure that you are um, reading product labels because sometimes there are places uh, that I've actually shopped even recently that still sell this one. And so you want to be very careful once you've gone through and removed this and you know you want to have the same sort of a feel here. I would um, make sure you're uh, going to those stores that have those sterile varieties. So you could get Mayan Purple. Purple Showers I think is a taller variety. The Mayan Purple I think is a, a shorter variety. So you can get something that's a little bit shorter than this one. I think this one looks like it's about uh, two and a half to three feet uh, tall. But let's say pink or white is your favorite color. They also come in that. So those were produced by University of Florida. So they will produce the flowers, but they do not produce the seed. So uh, you do not need to worry about whether it is going to uh, seed other places that are inappropriate and so because they will not produce that. So these are a few things you can try. The other thing you need to be careful of is that there are other Ruellia species and so this is Ruellia simplex and there were several other um, species as well but there is a native Ruellia. It doesn't look anything like this. We actually have that in our garden uh, in the demonstration garden at work and so you can go through and uh, choose to get um, a native Ruellia. It won't look like this um, but it's a lovely plant and so you can also check into some other things. So, so if you want to replace um, what you have if you've got this plant. You obviously have lots of choices and you need to look at the condition. So sun, light, um, water, so that the plant you replace, if it's not going to be one of the sterile varieties, you have to meet those new conditions because this guy will grow anywhere and so you have to actually do a little bit of site analysis to decide what will grow well. So today what you could do is um, look and see what other varieties you can plant. Uh, you can check to see if you have this invasive species uh, in your property so that you can make sure you're managing it so it doesn't spread other places. Uh, and then uh, try something else. You could try one of the native Ruellia. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Lisa Sanderson with UF IFAS Extension in Sumter County for Let's Talk Gardening, our invasive plant series. Uh, next week, we'll take a look at another invasive plant.